I never knew that the salt water, which usually keeps you afloat, could easily make you drown, and that a simple cough could snuff out the glow of the glowworms in the cave. All right, let's get started. Never make a noise in a glowworm cave. Waiatomo Caves, or glowworm caves, is one of New Zealand's most amazing natural wonders. In fact, it's a whole complex that includes about 150 grottos and caves. But it's not about the numbers. It's what's inside that counts. These caves are home to glowworms, and they make this place feel like pure magic. But don't get me wrong, their glow isn't just for show. Deep inside the cave, you'll spot spider webs made of silky threads in the most remote corners. These webs serve as cozy hideouts for glowworm larvae, who set them up as clever traps to lure in their next meal. When these larvae work up an appetite, their bellies glow with a vivid blue-green light, creating that enchanting glow. Just a few million years back, this place used to be underwater. Over time, the water eroded the rocks, creating caves, and then receded, setting the stage for some pretty unique creatures to call it home, like glowworms. You can guess why the glowworms love it here. It's dark, damp, and cozy. But to witness the magical glow inside the caves, there are a few simple rules for visitors to follow. One of them is to keep the noise level down to a hush, maybe even a whisper. <coughs> Sorry. Even the tiniest noise can spook glowworms, and if they get scared, their glow disappears. Glowworms certainly aren't the sole inhabitants of these caves. Albino cave ants and giant crickets roam around, and there are small underground lakes where New Zealand longfin eels make their home. And these are only the creatures people have actually seen. Who knows, there could be more. Mother Nature's full of mysteries, and some of them are still unsolved. But the mystery of salt water that can drown you seems even stranger to me. Don't ever try floating face down in the Dead Sea. On June 22, 2023, a man decided to take a swim in the Dead Sea, but little did he know it would be his last. Rescuers tried their best to resuscitate him, but it didn't work. Even the doctors who showed up couldn't do anything. It's all about the water. The Dead Sea is one of the saltiest bodies of water in the world. It's so salty that you can just float around without even trying. Of course, it may seem that drowning in the Dead Sea is impossible. And it's true in the usual sense. You can't really drown in the Dead Sea even if you give it your all. In fact, it's pretty tough to touch the bottom, and if you try floating on your back, your face will be sticking out of the water. But here's the twist. If someone takes a tumble and ends up face down in the water, things get tricky. Anyone who's been in a regular pool knows that in normal water, all you gotta do to get your head above water is push your feet down. That's easy to do in fresh water or a less salty sea, but it's a whole different thing when the water's trying to lift every part of your body. Plus, because the water's really dense, it's not easy to push your hand through and turn yourself over. The Dead Sea's high salt content isn't just a risk for swimmers, it can actually be toxic. Just a few sips of its water can destroy your body's electrolyte balance, leading to poisoning. Excessive salt can harm the heart and kidneys and ultimately shut down the body. In 2010 alone, more than 20 people drowned this way. But if the salty sea in the summer can drown you, then an ordinary lake in winter will easily burn you. What? Never set bubbles under the ice on fire. If you ever find yourself out on a frozen lake during winter and spot some weird bubbles trapped under the ice, don't touch them. If you see that there are no ice bubbles where the bubbles are rising, do nothing, because the bubbles are made of methane. Methane is a potent greenhouse gas that forms when stuff from the dead and decaying plants and creatures breaks down without air. When there's too much of this methane gas, it can erupt from under the ice with a bang, like an explosion. And if you happen to release it and set it on fire, do not do that. It'll basically look like a gas stove on the lake surface. But you won't be able to control it like your kitchen stove. You can't control how much gas comes out or how fiercely it burns. I'm sure you can guess why that's not a good idea, right? Here, by the way, is how these bubbles look on the map. And here's the bubble that formed on Lake Baikal. Can you imagine what would happen if you set it on fire? Oops, let's just leave before someone sees us. Okay, what's next on the list? You are not allowed to die in the settlement of Long Yerbian. This may sound like a recipe for immortality, but it's quite different in this small Norwegian community. The reason you can't die here is simple. Bodies don't break down due to the frigid temperatures. <laughs> There's really no way to deal with them. You could even say they've outlawed death since the 1950s. 
Back in the early 1900s, scientists made a surprising discovery when they found that bodies buried in permafrost didn't rot. It's like they were stored in a massive underground icebox. It's not just that burial space isn't being freed up. When you've got a well-preserved dead body, the germs and viruses inside stay perfectly preserved too. They could potentially be a threat to the living. Among the people buried like this, some died from the influenza pandemic, a nasty disease that broke out in the early 20th century. It killed anywhere from 17 to maybe as many as 100 million people. Long story short, nobody wants a repeat of that. So if someone's on their deathbed, they're being moved out of Long Yerbian to other cities in the country. Try not to breathe in the tombs of the pharaohs. The famous burial place of Pharaoh Tutankhamun came close to being ruined and it had nothing to do with the Hittites, whom Egypt often fought with. The problem was humidity and carbon dioxide, which got into the pharaoh's tomb thanks to the hordes of tourists. It wasn't their fault, of course. People naturally perspire and breathe, but the tomb wasn't designed for the living in the first place. Tourists can make indoor spaces feel more humid, elevate carbon dioxide levels, and help tiny particles spread around. The dust they carry is a big issue, too, as it can absorb moisture, damage painted surfaces, and cling stubbornly to things. That kind of dust is also damn hard to remove. These dots on top of the image, of course, aren't supposed to be there. Eventually, to prevent further damage, restoration experts constructed a replica tomb located approximately a mile from the original site. It makes sense that people want to keep the actual tomb intact, but checking out a copy isn't that exciting. Tourists can check out a perfect copy of the ancient pharaoh's tomb, even down to the fine details, like the paint on the walls, without harming the real thing. Experts believe that the tombs of the pharaoh in the Valley of the Kings could vanish in 150 to 500 years if they keep letting tourists inside. Never close the door to an ice cave. If you want to keep the ice cave chilly, leave the door open. Might sound weird, but there are plenty of ice caves around the world, and experts worry that too many visitors could heat things up, causing the ice to melt and turning the attraction into a big puddle. That's why the caretakers have put in airtight doors in at least two of these ice caves, with the best intentions of safeguarding the ice from warmth and unwanted guests. There's one thing, though. Turns out those doors had the exact opposite effect, blocking the air a bit too well, which could cause any cave to completely melt in just 40 years. Research on a 3 million year old ice cave in China recently helped us understand why this is happening. See for yourself. This cave has only one entrance, but it's perfectly fine and the ice isn't melting. Why? Because warm air tending to be higher up doesn't get into the cave. Meanwhile, winter cold air pushes heat out of the cave, so the cold winter breezes act as a natural air conditioner and keep the cave cool. Everyone's happy and there's no need to spend money on doors. Never launch a drone where birds are nesting. At the Bolsa Chica Ecological Reserve in Southern California, thousands of eggs of the elegant tern ended up abandoned on the beach. And it looks like none of those eggs will ever hatch. Sounds like a localized ecological disaster, and it happened because a drone crashed on the reserve. Yeah, just one drone. But it was enough to scare 3,000 birds so badly that they abandoned their nests and eggs. Drones were actually banned in this place, but some people, as is usually the case, don't care about bans. Fortunately, the elegant turn is not considered endangered, but this doesn't make the situation any less tragic. Never go near the water in Yellowstone Park. I realize it's hard because the place is just incredibly beautiful, but I'm going to explain what it's all about using one particular story as an example. Some hikers took two chickens with them, canoed for about eight hours, and hiked to the Shoshone Geyser Basin, where they decided to cook the chickens in a hot spring. <laughs> Sounds awesome. But their dinner didn't quite go as planned. It led to the three campers pleading guilty to petty offenses. According to court documents, they were sentenced to two years probation, plus they're now banned from visiting the park during that period and fined between $500 and $1,200. All because the tourists violated a number of rules. After all, you can't approach the water, and even more so, you can't put anything in it. To think of dipping your foot or hand practically into boiling water? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? 
The 2.2 million acre park has more than 10,000 features, including hot springs, geysers, mud pots, and steam vents. Throughout Yellowstone National Park, warnings about the dangers of entering geological thermal areas are written in bold white lettering on red signs. According to park rules, exploring them is prohibited with no exceptions. However, no ban can ever stop human curiosity, even when there's a threat to life. After all, the soil under and around springs and geothermal sites can be very fragile. And there's a high risk that those who don't stay within the park's approved boundaries will end up suffering burns or other injuries. And not just injuries. Since 1872, 22 people have died in Yellowstone Park due to burns. That's more than double the number of deaths from bear and bison encounters. No one wants to kill humans as much as they want to kill themselves. Never pee in lakes. And we don't just mean the hot lakes of Yellowstone Park. Swimmers have killed about 500 fish in a lake in northern Germany, and human urine has caused algae that's poisoning marine life. That sounds weird. However, swimmers have indeed been banned from the lake until the outbreak of algae growth is addressed. When we came across this news, there wasn't much information, so we decided to dig into it ourselves. Is all of this true? Can urine in a lake really damage fish? The short answer is yes. Whether the urine was the murder weapon in this particular case depends on some factors that we were unable to find out. For example, it's important to know the number of swimmers and the chemical composition of the lake. But urine can certainly kill fish, although it's not really the urine itself that does it. It just contains a lot of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, nutrients that are good for plant growth. So if you add large amounts of urine to a lake, you're essentially dumping a bunch of fertilizer into the lake, and the algae happily bloom. Then, after using up the fertilizer, the algae continue to consume oxygen, and when they die, their decomposition results in even more oxygen consumption, drastically reducing oxygen levels in the water. So the fish usually just suffocate. By the way, this is not the first time a huge body of water has faced such a threat. Conservationists caution travelers not to urinate when visiting the Great Barrier Reef for fear of algae blooms killing corals. The experts didn't name the criteria for determining whether or not it's safe to urinate in a body of water, so we advise against doing it at all. It's very strange that in 2023 we still have to explain things like this. And if human bodily fluids and climate change join forces, sounds like a team up of weird supervillains, but this is the kind of coincidence that's drastically altered the chemistry of Walden Pond. Phytoplankton populations in the pond have increased dramatically since the 1920s, causing the water to lose its beautiful blue color and become murkier, even green. Add to this the shoreline development. In short, water clarity is now a thing of the past. Algae aggression. Turns out that algae blooms make sea lions more aggressive. Yes, the same algae that results from people peeing in the wrong place. Demoic acid is produced by the algae called Pseudonychia australis. When enough of the toxin accumulates in the systems of small prey such as sardines and anchovies, they can pass it up into larger predators. Sea lions are affected the most. Often these animals die as a result, but in some cases, their level of aggression grows quickly. That is, your indecent behavior can literally make the sea lion angry. Dead Sea is getting deader. Scientists have done the math. Over the past two to three decades, the water level in the Dead Sea has fallen by about four feet per year, down from two feet per year in the 1970s and 1980s. This was mainly because water was diverted from its only tributary, the Jordan River, to provide water for surrounding communities. Seems like a right and logical step, but when the water level drops, the lake becomes saltier, especially near the surface. The concentration of salt increases, which means that poisoning could also come faster. That's not encouraging news, to be honest. Hold your breath. The Lisseau Cave in France became a popular tourist site after World War II. You've probably seen the cave paintings found there. After all, it's one of the most important late Paleolithic sites. But in 1963, it had to be closed to the public as visitors' breath and sweat created carbon dioxide and humidity that could damage the paintings. Does this situation sound familiar? Yes, it's the same problem as with Tutankhamun's tomb. The French government spent $64 million to build a nearly perfect replica of the cave to be placed next to it. What? It works. Making replicas of ancient caves, monuments, and the like is the worst way to spend money ever. See you later.